idea to have him jump at night. Well, undercover agents rarely arrive for lunch, Evan. Someone could have killed it. You know it. So do they. Red light on! Is it like sleepwalking? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, they say you're not supposed to wake anyone who's uh, sleepwalking, and uh, I just wondered if that applied to uh, whatever it is you're doing. I'm afraid what I'm doing is meditating. Afraid? Well, why afraid? Because it seems certain that if vegetarians are odd ducks to you, anyone who meditates must be positively mad. Frankly, yes. But jumping out of a plane 2,000 feet above the ground is quite understandable to you. And learning those parts of the human body that are most vulnerable to hand-to-hand -hand assault is quite fine. And allowing a man to bore a hole in an otherwise healthy tooth so a pellet filled with deadly poison can be placed in one's mouth is obviously a very sane thing to do. But closing one's eyes and listening to a silence, that is mad. You did volunteer, after all. I did. But please don't tell me the world is presently sane, Mr. Michaelian. It's at war, and war is a kind of madness. I've made my choice. That's why I'm here. Is that all? No. It is my considered opinion that you have the most seductive pair of eyes in the whole Western Hemisphere. Good day. Well, what are you doing here? We'll come to that in a moment. Where is it? Second door from the top. Uh. Well, that size says a great deal. None of it good. That size, the result of a long plane ride, long days and nights in New York, and endless roundabouts of Mr. Hoover's minions. How soon can you get the next batch ready to move out? According to schedule, we... Don't um... forget about the schedule. I know about the schedule. You see, the Germans are moving much faster than anybody thought possible, including the pessimists like myself. Already they're concentrating the air fleets and landing craft for the invasion of Britain. The underground movements in France and Holland are both heavily infiltrated. So we have to get more agents into operation as soon as possible. Right now, I need your best man. That's going to be a problem. Why? My best man is a woman. Well, what? I was asking you a question. Oh, well, maybe you meant to, but what you actually said was, could you mic so sail a wall? <laughs> no, 
I admit it's an interesting question. It's philosophical in a way. Zen-like in its implications, but I don't have the answer. Well, could you make so sail a war? Who knows, really? What I'm trying to say is, would you like to take a walk? Yes. Now, don't go giving clues away. <laughs> clues about what? Well, we're all supposed to be dropped here from, from some other planet. Without any past history of anything or any place. So, uh, anybody who knows the cry of the loon from, say, the cry of the coot, that somebody must have been brought up in the country. You don't expect me to reply to that, do you? <laughs> no, I suppose not. But it does make conversation bloody difficult. I mean, one of the things that people talk about when they're trying to get to know each other is uh, where they come from, and what their names are, what they like to do. We can make this very simple if we're willing. All right, try me. My name is whatever you wish to call me. My home is wherever you wish to take me. I enjoy doing exactly what we're doing this instant. Yes, that is simple. It's also very frightening. Anybody who could say what you've just said to me should never go to war. No one should ever go to war. But should isn't ever a part of war, is it? A choice has to be made, you said so yourself. What are you laughing at? Oh, this. Everything that's gone on between you and me. I mean, this isn't how it should be. Those screenwriters have got it all wrong. It's the man who's supposed to go where to do and die. It's the woman who's supposed to remain behind. And the railway station with lips all a quiver and tears glinting in the corner of her eye. Instead, you're going away and... I'm staying behind, playing make-believe games. There's another difference. We're not lovers. Not yet. Not yet. McCain, how are you? I'm fine, sir. When did you get back? Last night. I have a question for you. We're enlarging the facilities at Bletchley. You want to go back? I'll answer the question for you. You want to go because I want you to go, right? By the way, Willoughby says you've done some extremely good work lately. You want to show me the result of some of that good work? Well... This? Wait. Truckfuls of these, carefully deployed, like so. We look from the air like a whole armor division. Very good, very good indeed. So you're on your way back to England. Take one of these with you. Winston Churchill will love it. <laughs> well, sir, when do I go? Tonight, about midnight. Check with transport. Thank you. 
Should I have called ahead for a reservation? <laughs> well, um, there is a war on, you know, but we do make concessions for our regular customers, especially our favorites. Here, this is for you. Poetry. No, truly, I am. But it, I, I can't. Well, you know how disorganized I am. I, I mislay it, and then I, well, I, I'd never get it back to you. And uh, well, you know how people are about favorite books. I, I'm, I'm that way myself. Evan, it's a gift. It's not a loan. Yes, but I. I haven't got anything for you. Can you smile? Then that smiles for me. And the book is for you, and that's all there is to that. Now, I have a million things to do. Well, uh, oh. Um, I'll see you tomorrow, all right? Tomorrow? I, um... Uh... Tomorrow I've got rather a lot on, I. But this isn't exactly a booming metropolis they've got us in. We'll see each other. I'm sure of it. Madeline. Yes. Yes, we'll see each other. I'm sure of it. Well done. 
Now, that would have destroyed a generator, wouldn't it? Surely it would have, sir. It would have destroyed the men working on the generator, too. Well, hopefully not. Hopefully not? You don't wish to kill Germans? Not necessarily. Really better to wound them. You see, it takes three or four Germans to take care of a wounded man. It might occupy their labours for two or three weeks. It takes only two Germans the better part of an hour to bury a dead one. More efficient to wound them. They're not animals. No, I know they're not animals. And I'd never advocate taking action that would result in wounding an animal. I'd kill it, put it out of its misery. That's what a sportsman would do, isn't it? But you see, my dear, where Germans are concerned, we're not required to be sportsmen. By the by, I hear you're doing very well in these courses of yours. Ought to be proud of yourself. Thank you very much, sir. We're just asked to be released, that's all. Well, why not? Help me with these. All right, then. But if you were to let Stevenson know how you're beginning to feel about all this. But what I feel doesn't matter. What I am doesn't matter. It matters to me. But not to them. To them, I'm a tool. A device. No different from any other piece of weaponry being developed. A commander does not inquire of a tank if it feels ready to do battle. He puts it in gear and it goes. You're not a machine, for heaven's sake. Yes, I am. Old Willoughby used to tell us that all the time. Cogs in a machine and we were to do what we were told. We both know they'll be sending me over shortly. There won't be any warning. And there won't be any time for goodbyes. One day we'll be together and the next day I'll be gone. We should bear that in mind, you know. No matter what it is, as long as it's something you've never before told another living soul. Tell me something that's a part of you that I can keep to myself very selfishly for as long as I want. I used to dream of growing up to be a gypsy princess. <laughs> well, well, go on. So I could dance about a campfire with ever so many gold bracelets up and down my arms. <laughs> with my feet wet with the dew and my face warm from the fire. I've done all the damage they're going to do today. Well, why pick on us? Oh. And here? I've heard they sometimes get the bombs jammed in the Bombay and then they trigger them loose over the countryside rather than land with them back in Germany. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, you know, I've... Uh, I've never heard that before. 
But you know, I'm not sure I ought to believe tales told by a gypsy princess. Seeing as there's no campfire to dance around. Because of the blackout regulations, I suppose. I make an exception. Just as once. And besides, there's a war on. Yes, there is. Did I frighten you? Yes. A little bit, perhaps. I'm sorry. There are some things that should be done quickly, and by the man in charge whenever possible, as in this case. What is it you want, Mr. Stevenson? Colonel Gubbins says that he thinks you've mastered everything there is to learn here. Codes, radio technique, sabotage, self-defense. Would you agree with that? Please. Do you, do you think that you're ready? Yes or no? Yes, I'm ready. Come and sit down. on the green, Dave. I'll be along in a minute. Morning. Evan? Yes? She's not here. She's gone. What do you mean? She's gone. Where? I don't know. I couldn't tell you even if I did know. I'm sorry. Not like this. Madeleine. Yes. Pleased to meet you. Let's get inside. We've a number of things to go over before takeoff. Surely. Good trip down. Yes, fine. Thank you. I signed a moon plane. It lands almost anywhere. I'll not be jumping then. Oh, no, you're far too valuable to risk in a jump. We'll put you right onto the people you're supposed to meet. This way. No, right now I'm uh, arranging for the um, delivery of the first shipment to the people concerned. I'll tell you all about it when I see you then. Look forward to it. Oh, by the way, I'm very happy that you feel the same way I do about J. Edgar Hoover. I am quite convinced he's not a hysterical old woman, despite what everybody else says. Goodbye. The line was tapped, and you certainly made it difficult for them, for them to provide Hoover with a verbal transcript. A trifle dangerous, too, I think. Is it true that you've sent Madeline over? That's none of your business. Oh, but it is. I've talked to her. I know her, and you're making a mistake. She just doesn't have that, that inner core, that, that callous brutality that she must have in order to survive over there. 
Well, I don't agree with you. We don't agree with you. She's totally incapable of killing another human being. But, Evan, she's not going over as an assassin. She's going as a radio contact. Who'll be unable to defend herself. Nonsense. She has the skills. But not the heart. I think we have to tell Evan about Mrs. Wallace's report. Evan, it's better you get this from me face to face instead of later on from a third party in the form of a rumor. Well, what is it? You're not going to like it at all. Mrs. Wallace, one of the radio operators here at Bletchley, she's convinced that one of our underground networks, codenamed Prosper, has been infiltrated and is now controlled by the Germans. I don't agree with the accuracy of this report. Why are you telling me this? Because Madeline's assignment is to contact Prosper. And if this report is correct, if the network has been infiltrated and compromised. Oh, I see. If the network's intact, she'll survive. If it's not, you have your proof that your report is correct. That's all she is to you. The Judas goat. I've already told you we don't agree with the accuracy of the report. Over there. Good luck.
Allah. been able to make contact. Not a good sign. Well, as long as you've found out something. A little bit of progress. I suppose it's all to the good. May I give you a drink? No, Mr. Stevenson. You may not. Don't give a damn. You never have. That's not true, but I'm not entering into a debate about it. What do you intend to do about it, if I may ask? What we've done for the last two days. Listen out on the correct frequency at the correct time. Is that all? Do you have a better idea? Send someone in to find her. That's not an idea. That's pure Terry and the Pirates. Thank you. Is something the matter? Sister Luke, do you remember me? I don't know. There have been so many girls I've had over so many years. I was a student here for three years. I'm not a Catholic. I was the only one in your class that was not. I used to write stories for small children, and you used to tell me that but the best part of one's spirit was that part that remained a child. I'm sorry. There have been so many. You used to tell me that faith was the most precious thing. That faith would sustain us. But I've said that to hundreds of girls, my dear. Faith involves what I'm about to tell you. I'm with the English and I've been unable to make contact with the people who were to meet me. I need sanctuary, Sister Luke. I still do not remember who you are. But of course I'll help you. The gate is down this way. I know. I was a student here once.
You do realize that you cannot stay here. I know that. I can direct you to a farmhouse that will be safe. But I cannot help you get in touch with any people who could work with you. Why not? There could be two reasons. First, I know of no one who could help you. And that I am an elderly nun who does not choose to concern herself with anything which goes on outside these walls. And the second reason? The second reason could be I have no way of proving you are who you say you are. And even if I did teach you, that is no guarantee that you are not working for the Germans. And if I am? All you will have netted for your employers is an elderly nun, which will impress them not at all. Thank you. For the soup. Of course. For the soup. Good morning, Mrs. Wainwright. Morning. Oh, you know Mr. McCallion, don't you? I do. Morning, Mr. McCallion. Morning. In a minute, just now. How's your daughter, Mrs. Wainwright? The last time we talked, she was expecting. Had a lovely little girl, sir. Congratulations. Thank you very much, sir. Isn't it time yet? No, sir. Quite. I suppose she comes on the air early. Oh, she won't, sir. We teach them better than that. She go on at the proper time. If she's there at all. There is a change of frequency today, isn't there? Yes, sir. Check it. Sir, I'm sure. Check it. Correct, sir. I trained Madeline for three months, Mr. McCallion. You aren't the only one who had occasion to go fond of the child. I beg your pardon, Mrs. Wainwright. Of course, sir. She's not there, Evan. She's just not there. 